Good Thursday morning, and thanks for checking out your latest long-range forecast update. Michael Clark here with Bam Weather. We're going to talk about a pattern conducive for severe storm clusters, potentially that in the form of derechos. Those are those big uh, blobs of, of wind, rain, lightning, hail, you name it. Uh, we're going to talk about a pattern conducive for the setup for that coming late June into July. Uh, and obviously, we have to talk about the Pacers real quick. Game one tonight... Uh, for the Pacers playing the Oklahoma City Thunder. So got to have the Pacers gear on. Go Pacers. Hey, so if the video brings you any value today, make sure you uh, share it with a friend, subscribe to the YouTube channel. And this is the kind of the pattern, the overarching view of what we're going to talk about today. This is where we're going to go, but let's, let's get into a couple other things here before that. This is Radar This Morning here on our Clarity platform, which again, anyone can access at any time going to bamwx.com. We've had needed rainfall moving through, and in fact, some additional rain developing heavier uh, threat here along and south of the I-70 corridor on the back side of this here across central Indiana this morning. And uh, we've had heavy rain coming down, you know, heavy, heavy rain. We look at observed rainfall forecast, or uh, observed rainfall, not forecast over the last 24 hours. And you can see some places that needed much needed rain, especially across portions of northeast Illinois, northern Indiana, and southern Michigan. The rain was needed there. Uh, we look at our soil moisture percentile maps, and again, that's that's where it was needed, you know. Uh, and so this was a good, timely rain for those folks here in this area. Um, and I'm sure no one is complaining about that. At least I wouldn't think so uh, for the time being. So it, it also rained, if you look at the two-day ra observed rainfall here across portions of Illinois, too, uh, into Indiana and Michigan. So... Good for sure, right? We look at today's severe weather outlook. We do have a potential for two areas of isolated, uh, more intense thunderstorms, southern Kansas, Panhandles, Oklahoma, and Texas, and then down there across uh, Lubbock and through Midland. And that's primarily going to come in the form of probably some very large hailstones here across the west central portion of the Texas Panhandle. Tomorrow, the outlook shifts east a little bit, and you can see it's, it's stretching from Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, Tennessee, and portions of Kentucky. Uh, the greatest risk for tomorrow will be hail there along the panhandle and then wind as it stretches from west to east. Day three it continues. Probability for severe weather and thunderstorm clusters from from Oklahoma all the way to the Carolinas for the potential there for stronger storms. So in the short term we look at the rainfall forecast the next 24 hours. Again all this from Clarity. You can do all this from Clarity. It's an amazing platform. You can learn more by going to bamwx.com. This map updates every hour, and it goes out 24 hours. It's a blend of weather models from all over the world. And you can interrogate the map. It'll tell you how much rain is going to fall in certain spots. I mean, it's a great, great tool. That's the 24-hour rainfall forecast, with the focal point being down there in the South Central Plains in Indiana and Ohio. And then the next three days, again, when we have these Thunderstorm clusters we're going to be concerned about across Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, into Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana, Ohio, West Virginia. Anywhere you see the yellow or darker, it's a one-inch-plus rain forecast the next three days. Okay, so needed rains, but note the seven-day forecast here in the area across Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, all right, here into uh, portions of Nebraska. And, and the Dakotas. Note, not a lot of rain there the next seven days. Well, let's take a look at the updated drought monitor that came out this morning. And you can see uh, some, some intense dryness there in portions of Nebraska. Iowa has improved. Northern Illinois and Indiana got rain the last couple of, uh, of hours here. That, that will help. Um, but we're going to need more than that. And you can see the class change, especially in the last four weeks. It's gotten very dry across this particular region. This is the region. Listen, for summer, uh, as we get in deeper into summer and deeper into the forecast, this is the region I'm concerned about for uh, the potential for dryness to develop more of it. Uh, yes, thunderstorm clusters can, can, can certainly serve as a risk here, but those don't deliver plentiful, long-lasting rains. Those deliver gusts of wind and quick bursts, okay? You've got excessive rain risks today. You've got them uh, tomorrow, right here across Oklahoma again. Day three, it slides into Arkansas, western Tennessee. Day four, it continues to focus in Oklahoma. 
and Texas down there in the deep south. So some really heavy rains are going to be possible down there. I mean, we talked about there's look at those seven day rain totals, you know, Alabama getting blasted and, and Oklahoma once again. OK, let's take a look at this in this in, a, in the sense of uh, just 24 hour uh, rain totals. OK, and uh, this is what's going on here today. That's moving east. We'll go into you can see the, the two focal points here in West Kansas and uh, the Panhandles. We'll go into the, the day two. There's that heavy rain forecast. This is using the European model. Heavy rain forecast down there across Oklahoma through Missouri, stretching all the way up into the north and east. Here's the day three rain forecast. You can see why there's a severe risk there, day three, uh, coming out. And you can see the thunderstorm cluster suggestions here from the European model. All right. Going to day four. More rain and, and thunderstorms possible across the Ohio Valley, the deep south, the south and east. In the day five, kind of have a we have a kind of a stalled out boundary down here. It's quasi linear or quasi stationary, I'm sorry, boundary that will offer up several days of thunderstorm scattered thunderstorm threats and chances. Okay, getting into day six, day seven. Look how dry it gets. I want you to start watching something in the extended. Look at this particular orientation here. All right, you see that? All right, you go in here to keep it going. Right, there it is again. See that northwest to southeast suggestion of flow? Well, there's a reason for that. I want to talk about this. I'm going to go to the European model. We're going to show you the 500 millibar height anomalies. And we'll look at North America. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we'll start where we are now. Okay, here, here's, here's today. Squashed ridge down to south Texas. Trough moving in. And, and that's the point. The, the point is, is quasi-linear. Uh, I keep saying quasi-linear. Quasi-stationary. Quasi just meaning somewhat, you know, kind of back and forth, sloppy, stationary boundary uh, across the deep south for a couple of days. Cold front comes in, brings reinforcing shot of cooler air here this weekend, late into early next week. OK, it cools off there. So week one is still cool. The pattern starts to really transition and evolve. The Bermuda high flexes by day seven. You can see it out here in the Atlantic. And what starts to happen is the global wind pattern slows down. And a ridge starts to develop. Now out here by day, we'll call it 11 or 12, we're already seeing a flow pattern develop that could be conducive for thunderstorm clusters. And let me let me kind of talk about what I mean here. What you're seeing is the development of this upper level ridging here off the European Ensemble with the trough here in the Pacific Northwest. So this reorients the jet stream up and over like this. Well, what happens when this when this particular setup occurs is underneath this and around the dome, the periphery, particularly this line here, the 588 height line, significant levels of instability uh, form and moisture is pumped in from the Pacific Ocean. And coupled with the two, thunderstorm clusters can start to form along the periphery of the ridge. And they can get pretty intense as they follow the instability and the moisture gradient up and over the flow pattern. European is indicating that as early as by day 11 or 12 or the 16th of June. As we continue to progress forward, you can see that pattern pretty stagnant. In fact, by day 15, it's still there. I'm zooming into the conus. And what this pattern would promote is a number of things. And we're going to talk about that. First, it would promote intense heat through here. Okay, intense heat. Then it would promote a flow pattern where thunderstorm clusters would ride the periphery of this here. So you would introduce... Uh, you know, a, a potential setup along and north of that and just kind of south of it like this of thunderstorm clusters and multiple waves to come through the area. All right. And potentially set up to be a couple of significant ones. This is as early as the 19th or 20th of June. This is that day 15 forecast. But also look at the temperature departure, the 850 temperature departure from normal. It's significant. It's a warm look by day 15. There's the surface departure from normal temperatures. These are warm temperatures for June 20th standards. In fact, you're probably making a stretch at mid to upper 90s. Some places might even be flirting with 100 degree high temperatures here late month. It's not a cold pattern. All right. That's the European. There's the GFS. It's cooler east. I don't agree with it. There's the Canadian. Canadian and the Euro are the two sides I would take at least right now. Okay. With that in mind. So here's week one, week two temperature. I've used a, a variety of different model products. I think the greatest potential right now, we need to see more, more, more confidence build. The greatest potential for the warmest temperature departures in week two 
are going to kind of come right in through here. Okay, right now it's a 70 to 80 percent probability of above normal temperatures. Some places are 80 to 90 percent probability. Week one, you're drier in here because the, the, the quasi stationary boundary is down here. So you're getting thunderstorm clusters you know, or you know, risks and scattered storm threats and, and that kind of thing week one. But you also have a cold front coming through. That's why week one's cooler than normal. Week two, the GFS, the ensemble, is seeing the flow pattern risk much better than the European. The wetter week two forecast through here is the better take, all right, in the form potentially late week two, late week two, 17th to 20th of June and beyond with thunderstorm clusters to develop in that particular region, right? Here's the North American ensemble forecast system with bias corrected um, forecast plots using multiple different ensembles. Again, if we had to, to get detailed with the best chances for heat, it's here. And then again, you can kind of see the model trying, honestly, really what it's trying to do, it's trying to see the precipitation flow pattern here around the ridge. You can see what it's doing. Just paint the high right here. Okay, that's what it's trying to do. Okay, so suggestions, indications, hints, it's coming. Let's look at the long-term CFS weather model. Watch this out the week three. There's your week three flow pattern right there. You can see it. Here's week four. The same. I mean, this is, you know, this is classic because you've got your ridge. All right. It's, it's down here. You've got the flow pattern over the top with the trough and the PNW. And, and it's, it's, it's suggestive that this can hang for weeks. Look at the CFS. Look how strong it gets with the ridge by week five. This is a 591 height pattern. Uh, very, this is a very warm temperature look. You look at the 850 departure from normal temperatures, it's warm. And what's interesting is you want to look at precip. And the model's trying to see it. It's trying to see the northwest flow pattern. Okay, you can see hints of it in the CFS daily run uh, that, that it wants to suggest along the periphery of that ridge, the flow pattern to be conducive for thunderstorm clusters. Look, you can already kind of see it in the European Cape forecast. Look at this. Watch this. Look at that energy developing there. And, and this is what this would do. You know, this is June 16th, 8 o'clock at night. What would happen is, is something would fire in here, and it would ride along the periphery of the ridge of the, of the instability gradient. You've got substantial instability in here, in fact, to the tune of 6,000 joules of cape. Watch the next day. I mean, look at that. Good night. That's Wednesday, June 18th. You would have, you're setting up potential here for a really nasty thunderstorm cluster pattern somewhere in here. You know, I mean, this is... Again, out by the the 18th of June, that's a that's a nasty look. So, um, just something to keep in mind. This pattern certainly conducive for strong storm clusters late week two into week three. That's the idea right now, and that may even need to come even more southwest. And we'll have to kind of see how that's going to pan out. Be sure to share this with a friend. Subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon.